to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and salvation. O oh, come, let us worship him. Let us kneel and bow down before him. Let us confess our sins with penitent hearts and obtain forgiveness by his infinite grace and mercy. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed the devices and desires of our hearts. We have offended against your holy law. We have done those things which we should not have done, and we have not done those things which we should have done. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Spare us and restore us according to the promises you have declared to us in Jesus Christ our Lord. For his sake, grant that we may live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. The Almighty and merciful Lord has granted us pardon and forgiveness of all our sins, grace for true repentance and amendment of life, and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated as we join together in singing hymn 95. We sing verses 1 through 4.
to deal craftily with his servants. He sent clothes as his servant, and Aaron, whom he had chosen, he brought out his people with joy, his chosen ones with gladness. He
whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So the Pharisee said to him, You are a very witness about yourself. Your testimony is not true. Jesus answered, Even if I do bear witness about myself, my testimony is true. For I know where I came from and where I am going, but you do not know where I came from or where I am going. You judge according to the flesh, I judge no one. Yet even if I do judge, my judgment is true. For it is not I alone who judge, but I am the Father who sent me. In your law it is written that the testimony of two people is true. I am the one who bears witness about myself, and the Father who sent me bears witness about me. Jesus answered, You know neither me. They, they, they said to him, therefore, Where is your Father? Jesus answered, You know neither me nor my Father. If you knew me, you would know my Father also. These words Jesus spoke in the treasury as he taught in the temple, but no one arrested him, because his hour had not yet come. So far the text. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Thank you. 
yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. God the Holy Spirit has caused the text we consider this evening to have been recorded for us in the book of Exodus chapter 3. And we hear these words again in Jesus' name. Now Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian, and he led his flock to the west side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. He looked, and behold, the bush was burning, yet it was not consumed. And Moses said, I will turn aside to see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. When the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Do not come near. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. And he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt, and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And now behold, the cry of the people of Israel has come to me. And I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppress them. Come, I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? He said, But I will be with you. And this shall be the sign for you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. Then Moses said to God, If I come to the people of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Say to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. So far the text, and we pray. These are your words. Heavenly Father, sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, did you notice how this reading from Exodus chapter 3 about the Old Testament prophet Moses sounded a little bit like the Christmas story from Luke chapter 2? Now there, were, there, now there was in the country of Horeb a shepherd abiding in the field, keeping watch over his flock by night. And behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. And when Moses saw it, he wondered at this sight as he drew near to look. The voice of the Lord came, saying, I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob. And the shepherd Moses trembled and hid his face, for the glory of the Lord made him greatly afraid. And the angel of the Lord said to him, Fear not, for I have surely seen the ill treatment of my people that are in Egypt, and I have heard their groaning, and behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, for I have come down to deliver them. And now come, I will send you to Egypt to free my people from slavery. Yes, there are definitely some similarities here, aren't there, between these accounts. Shepherds, flocks of sheep, divine messages suddenly being spoken out of heaven into the night sky, and God coming to deliver his people. My friends, this story of Moses and the burning bush is really like an Old Testament Christmas an event that foreshadows the birth of Jesus and his coming to us in human flesh. So tonight we consider this first symbol of salvation, the mysterious bush that was bright with fire but was not consumed. My friends, everything in the Old Testament, from the book of Genesis to Malachi, 
pointed ahead to Jesus in some way or another. Jesus said to the Jews of his day, You search the scriptures, these are they that testify about me. Jesus is what the Bible is all about. He's the heart and center of the Old and New Testaments. So then, as we look at this mysterious burning bush, out of from which God's voice spoke to Moses, we realize that this fire, this bright light that burns and yet does not consume the bush, is none other than Jesus, God's Son himself, the messenger of Yahweh, the eternal word of God the Father, who is one with the Father from all eternity. He is the one speaking to Moses in our text out of the bush, the pre-incarnate Christ, that is, God's Son before he became incarnate, before he was born of the Virgin Mary. When Moses asks him his name, he calls himself the great I Am. That's his name. Why? Because he is God himself, the creator, the one who has always existed and who always will exist. He is, period. And his existence does not depend upon anything else. He is the light of light. That's what we call him every Sunday in the Nicene Creed. And here the eternal light of light veils himself in a bush in order to talk to Moses. Notice here how he descends to earth humbly in a veiled form. He could have come down with lightning and sparks and power and glory. But then poor Moses, a mere sinful man, would have been melted to smithereens before he could even take his sandals off had God appeared to him with such glory. And so God's Son, the Word, veiled, hid his divine glory so that it was but a voice and a fire wrapped up in the branches of an unassuming bush. And Jesus, God's Son, when he was born at Christmas time, came in a similar fashion. When laid in the wood and the hay of the manger, the Lord came down to our level. Just as he did in the bush with Moses, in the womb of the Virgin Mary, he put on humble flesh. He became one of us so that he could redeem us. And so that we poor, sinful human beings could approach him without fear. The burning bush, then, is a prophetic event, a symbol of Jesus' birth to come. It foretells of the time when Christ, God's Son, would descend down to this world again and permanently take on our human nature in the womb of the Virgin Mary. This event in Exodus also foreshadowed the reason for our Lord Jesus' birth at Christmas. The Lord Jesus announces to Moses from the bush that he has come to save and redeem his people, to rescue them from their enemies, the Egyptians. In the same way, Jesus came down at Christmas to rescue all humankind. Joseph and Mary were told, You shall call his name Jesus for he will save his people from their sins. Our Lord descended down to this earth to deliver us from our enemies who had enslaved us. He came to release us from the power of that wicked taskmaster, the devil, to set us free from the oppressive bondage of sin and death. By his holy incarnation and birth, Christ became the new Moses, if you will, who leads us, his chosen people, out of the kingdom of darkness through the baptismal waters of the Red Sea and into our promised land of the new creation. The one who appeared in a flame of fire to Moses is the one who in human flesh said to his disciples, whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. When Moses looked at the bush, 
he saw that it was burning with fire, but that the bush was not consumed. It wasn't burnt up. This also symbolizes two things. It tells us two things. First, it teaches us that the union between God and man that took place at the conception and birth of Jesus is eternal and everlasting. Jesus is forever, both fully divine and human at the same time. Just as the bush never burned up, so the union between God and man in Christ will never end. Jesus is true man right now as he sits at the right hand of God the Father in heaven. And he always will be true man. Mary's boy, our human brother. And second, the fact that the bush was not consumed teaches us that Jesus came into our human nature not to bring judgment upon our humanity, but to bring salvation and redemption to our bodies, to our humanity. This was not a fire that destroyed. It was a fire that revealed and proclaimed the words of deliverance and life. Jesus said, God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. No sinner in a sinful mortal state can see the holy God and live, but in the burning bush and especially in the holy child of Mary, sinful man can and does see God, veiled in earthly human clothing. Our God is one of us in the person of Jesus. And trusting in this God in flesh, man is made holy and lives forever. By taking on our human nature, Jesus did not consume and annihilate us, even though he was God's son and infinite. Rather, he permeated and filled our flesh and our lives so that we might share in his life. He became like us so that we may become like him. Jesus forgives us all our sins. He makes us holy in God's sight. And one day, because he has redeemed our human flesh, he will give us immortal, perfect bodies like his resurrected, glorious body so that we can stand before our creator and see him face to face forever in his heavenly kingdom. This is his promise to us, his gift to us by faith. We are forgiven, redeemed, our humanity restored and set free from slavery. If we remain in Jesus, if we believe in him and continue to abide in him, then we will receive all the blessings that he has to give us. Jesus said, I am. Notice, I am the vine, you are the branches. Jesus, God's son who revealed himself to Moses and the branches of the burning bush, now has taken on our flesh and blood in order that we might become his branches, connected to him, so that we can draw our life from him. Apart from Jesus, the branches wither and die and are burned in judgment. But abiding in Jesus, the branches thrive and share in the fire of his divine life. Jesus Christ is indeed a holy vine that took root first in Bethlehem, but is now spread over the whole earth. Truly then, the burning bush is a great sign of our Lord's coming at Christmas a living prophecy, an image, a picture of his incarnation. As we prepare to celebrate Jesus' birth, God grant that he who is that flame of fire may light up our hearts with true repentance so that we put away the darkness of our sins. May he cause our hearts to shine bright with faith and holy love. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.
join together in singing hymn 95, verses 5 through 8. And as we do so, we take our off.